Hello and welcome to the English What's New webinar. We are very happy that you are joining this webinar today and that you want to check out the latest features and improvements of the new version. Um, in the new version, we've optimized the Docker Performer with practical features and a lot of other improvements. And um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our customers from the entire Docker Performer team. Thank you for all the feature requests and the reported tickets. You have a big influence on the fact that Doku Performer is optimized and improved release by release. Okay, so let's start with the presentation. In a few days, you will, um, you will receive an email. Um, there you will find the download link and um, to download the 19.2 setup. We recommend that you download the 64-bit version and um, to follow the instruct instructions mentioned in the update wizard. Um, please pay attention to the important notes regarding the update and the email. So please create a backup of the database to avoid data loss and um, the minimum version of your current um, Docker Performer version must be 15.1 to update to the new version 19.2. Um, a new license is not necessary and um, I highly recommend um, our step-by-step -step update instructions in our user manual. Okay, so let's now move on to the new features in um, version 19.2. So first of all, um, the user manual. Um, we updated the user manual for the new version 19.2. So all the new functions, which, are, which I'll show you, are explained in detail with all the technical de details in our new user manual 19.2. Um, we update the user manual um, every major release. And um, besides the fact that we add all new functions of the respective major release, um, we also optimize the, the quality of the user manual from release to release. So we add more pictures, videos, and other um, helpful links into the user manual. Okay, so let's start with the first function. Um, release 19.2 makes the documentation concept of Doku Performer even rounder with the automation tool. This function has been um, on our agenda for a long time and starting with the new version, it will be possible to schedule document creation so that it can, that, um, it, uh, can then be performed automatically in the background. So let's have a closer look at how this automation tool works. So first of all, you have on the left side the Doku Performer. In this um, Doku Performer, you can create scenarios if you license the commenting module. And after this, you can um, select the scenarios which should be um, exported automatically in the background. Um, you can select the scenarios, then you can um, then you can um, select the target group specific settings, for example, like the settings variant or the comment variant, the language or the word template. So you can also select one scenario um, more than one time. And um, after this, um, you have to go to the automation tool. And in the automation tool, you can then um, select at which time the export should take place. And you can also select the um, file path, so in which folder the created documentation should be stored. Um, yes, and then as you can see, the scenarios, the documents, the documented scenarios will be um, stored in the in the in the defined um, file location, and your colleagues have access to daily updated documentations. If you want uh, to ensure that all user can um, um, have access to the documentations, um, we recommend to um, to define as the file path uh, to define um, a SharePoint so that all user can um, access to the documents. Okay, so the next question is um, how you can um, access to this automation tool. So the first uh, the first thing that change. Uh, changed is that the sync tool becomes the automation tool. So with the sync tool, um, only synchroni synchronizations um, could be scheduled in the past. 
But um, if you update the sync tool um, with the new version 19.2, or if you install it uh, completely new, um, then you have also the automation tool on your laptop. And as we have seen before in the illustration, the scenarios must be selected together with the target group specific settings in the Docker performer. So as you can see here, you can, um, you can click on this button in the scenario view and then you have the possibility to se select the created scenarios. And as I said before, you can select the settings variant, the documentation language, also the comment language and all other target specific settings. Um, next, certain settings must be made in the automation tool, as I said, be as I mentioned before. So, um, first of all, here, um, if you open the automation tool, then you can select here um, the path where the document should be stored. And with this button, you can also select um, the time at which the export um, is to be executed. Our, um, uh, we recommend that the files should be stored in the SharePoint so that everyone has access to the documents. And we also recommend that you set the time for the export um, tonight so that the latest documentation is available during the day. Um, some additional information, um, you need to install the Windows services um, to, um, to ensure that the documentation, that the, automatic, um, that the automated documentation um, uh, are executed. So this can, uh, can be done uh, via the automation tool. So an admin have, uh, has to open the automation tool and then he can um, install the Windows services, the needed Windows services. Yes, and one another point is that planning inside automation tool should be done by a central instance. So um, the idea is not that every user um, should make individual s uh, schedules. Um, the only th the only thing that the user should do is that um, he should select the scenarios which should be considered for the export. Okay, then we have some restrictions. So in the current version, so this is the first version of the automation tool. Um, our aim is to um, to optimize the automation tool and to um, ensure that we can um, um, that we um, yeah that we can improve the the functions of the automation tool. So the first restriction is that it's not possible to export the image of the data flow. The next point is that the technical documentation of a BW data source. Um, in the BO documentation is missing. So for example, if you have a Lumira report and if you edit um, a query as a data source into this Lumira report, and if you then um, add the Lumira report into a scenario and, um, and, um, decide, um, and decide to export this um, Lumira report automatically via the automation tool, then um, the technical documentation of this BW data source of this query will be missing. So this is currently not possible. It's also not possible to insert the version of the scenario into the file name of the document, of the exported document, because um, the documentation is always overwritten. So um, the idea behind this is that you have always one document that is, that, that is up, one um, up-to-date document in your in your folder and not several um, different documents with different names. So this is not the idea behind the automation tool. The idea is that you have one um, document that is always up to date. Okay, so um, we come to our next point. In the new version, there is a new possibility to combine existing scenarios with each other, the so-called um, consumable scenarios. So when creating a scenario, you can select which type it should have, so consumable or standard. And the scenarios of the type consumable can be added into the scenarios of the type standard. The big advantage is you don't need to rebuild um, the structure of an, of an available scenario within a scenario. Um, you can just add it into a um, into an available scenario. So, for example, if you created several scenarios of sub applications, and if you then want to um, add them into one scenario, scenario, then you can, for example, say, okay, all the scenarios where I reflected the sub applications are consumable scenarios, and then I can bundle all of this um, consumable scenarios in a standard scenario and document this standard scenario. 
Okay, so the chapter structure and the assigned objects will be considered during the export and will be integrated into the documentation. Here you can see where you um, need to define the type. So here you can select the consumable scenario and then you can insert the consumable scenario into the structure. So if you opened a standard scenario, then you have here a new tab where you can select all the consumable scenarios. Um, all existing scenarios um, built in previous versions um, become um, standard scenarios and the type can be changed via the context menu. The next point, let's turn now to the grid comments. For those of you who never worked with the grid comments before, um, the, with the grid comments you have the possibility to customize five grid comments in all supported languages. In Docker Performer, uh, for example, one grid comment could be the application, another grid comment could be re responsibility, and these grid comments can then be inserted into the entity grid. So you can add a grid comment for specific entities, and this makes it possible to filter according to certain values of the grid comments um, within the entity grid. So um, as I said, as you see here, this is, for example, one grid comment module, and then I can define a grid comment for each entity, um, for each synchronized entity. And after this, I can um, filter for this for a certain value. The editing logic has been changed in the new version 19.2, so now it's possible to edit grid comments directly in the entity grid. And um, the mass editing is also possible via copy and paste. You can also delete it really fast. We will see it on this slide. So as you can see, you can add directly new grid comments into the entity grid, into the fields. You can copy them, you can paste them into the grid comments, and you can delete them and confirm that you really want to delete them. As you can see, multiple languages can be displayed um, in, the, in one entity grid. This is also possible. Um, so in this case, um, we can also add the German status here and then edit both, both uh, entity grid um, at the same time. Um, we also changed the column chooser, as you can see. So now you have two tabs. First, the metadata, all the information that uh, we get from your SAP systems, and then the custom data there you can find all of the grid comments and also things like the last documentation, the date of the last documentation, the assigned layers or the assigned scenarios. Okay, um, I'd now like to move um, on to the next big improvement, the data flows. In older versions, it was only possible to display the data flows for BW Info Provider. Now it's also possible for other object types. Um, as you can see for HANA repository views, for ABAP CDS data definitions, and also for DDIC views. So they can be called via the context menu, as you know it from the um, BW Info Provider function, and currently it's not possible to execute analysis. So as you can hear, as you can see here, you can display the, for example, the data flow of a calculation view. But as I said before, as you can see, the, this is a data flow of the ABAP CDS data definition, and here you can see a data flow of data views. Completeness is an important topic in the context of data flows, and at the same time, um, completeness can quickly lead to confusion in complex data flows. Um, which is why we offer a new tool to solve this dilemma and the tool called data flow views. So um, what are the data flow views? The data flow views are um, self-created objects in Doku Performer and um, they represent a subset of a complete data flow of an entity and um, it improves clarity for complex data flows Analysis can be performed faster, for example, the lookup scan. And additional, from a business point of view, it might make sense to split your data flows, um, your data flow into several data flow views. Um, we will see this on the next slide. Yes, yeah, so first of all, here you can um, see how the data flow view selection works. So you can um, save, you can click here on save, and then you can save your um, subset of a data flow. Okay, so here we can see now um, an example uh, of data flow 
uh, of the data flow purchasing to explain the data flow view. So this is the entire data flow. And uh, um, we see that this purchasing data flow is a combination of different data. And it could maybe make sense to split the data flow into four different data flow views. So for example, this one, so a contract management data flow view. Then we can also save a backlog purchase um, order scheduled um, path and maybe this procurement account assignment path. And maybe we also want a, a data flow view um, uh, on a lower level, for example, the account assignment. So these are examples of, um, of data flow views. And um, let's see how it looks like in the Doku performer. So first of all, you can open the data flow view. You can decide if you want to open an offline data flow view or uh, online data flow upwards or downwards, and then you can um, click on OK. Next, you can exclude different paths of the data flow via the context menu, as you can see here. And then you can save the data flow view via this button. You can give the data flow view a name, a technical name. And then we can, for example, open um, another offline data flow view just to show you how you can afterwards select your created data flow view here. And then you see, we see the previously created data flow view. Okay, so this is the data flow view. We have a lot of um, um, additional information in our user menu. So if you need um, further information, then um, I recommend you to check our user manual. The next topic deals with the module modeling. So HANA Composite Provider can be imported into the software now together with their part providers. Um, it's also possible to import a multi-provider um, and then transform them into a HANA Composite Provider. Um, the possibility of the modification um, is that you can, um, for example, um, rename the part provider of a HANA composite, of an imported HANA composite provider within the Doku Performer. You can replace the part provider, but it's not possible to change other settings in the HANA composite provider itself. So this is not possible. And afterwards, you can export the um, new HANA composite provider into UBW for HANA system. Um, we implemented a new setting. Um, the setting uh, uh, BW for HANA object types was added, and it's perfect for the um, for the BW for HANA migration. So if you if you click on the setting, then um, you, as you can see in the table, multi provider will become um, HANA composite provider, and then InfoCube and Data Store objects will be trans transformed into um, RDSOs. Here you can see once again the setting. You can find it here in the import view. And if you then click on import S, then you will find in, um, in this menu the BV for HANA object types setting. OK, the next point um, is the way used analysis of multiple entities. Um, it's, it's a further optimization. Um, that we did in the new version. So the way used can be executed for info provider, for info objects, navigation attributes, queries, and a lot of other um, objects. And um, as a result, you get a really detailed report about the usage in other workbench ob objects, as well as in ABAP coding, and also in other BO reports. And um, we improved this function because this analysis can now be performed for multiple objects um, simul uh, simultaneously. So the results will be displayed combined in one workspace. And um, it can be executed via the context menu of an entity in the entity grid or in the analysis itself. The usages will be listed below each other. And um, as you can see here, this is the, the generated list. And as I said before, we will have um, several tabs if it's necessary. If we found usage, um, it, for example, in coding, then we create this tab 
this additional tab. And um, we create flat lists of usages in BW objects or in BO reports or in coding. And we also create, um, we also create, a uh, Docker Performer also creates a, a list with three structures of nested usages in reporting elements or process chains in the last tab here. Let's check how it looks like in Docker Performer. So you can open the function. You can click, for example, um, on all entity types. You can um, enter the needed entities in the multi-line filter. You can start the analysis. And then you can decide on which in which areas the usage should be checked. You can start the analysis. And then, as you can see, as we saw before on, this, on, this, on the slide before, we see the list of the usages in BW objects. In coding are no usages. We see the usage in BO reports and we see the, and we see the nested usage in process chains here. And then we can export this result into Excel and then we get this Excel. So also with all the results and the tabs are now um, reflected by the um, Excel sheets here in this menu. So we see the usage in objects, in BO reports, the nested usage in process chains, and in report elements. Okay, so the supported, the next point, um, the supported object types are extended. So the Docker performer supports hierarch hierarchies and DTPs, data transfer processes. Um, you can synchronize them and comment them and document them. Um, you can also assign these new um, two entities to scenarios. And the experienced Docker Performer user um, will, noticed, will notice that it was already possible to display and to comment the DTPs of Info Provider in earlier versions. But now it's really a separate object type. So it can really, um, for example, it can be integrated into a scenario. And um, the old comments of DTPs are transformed into classic comments during the update, and they are located at the respective DTP. Okay, so here you can see in the entity um, tree the new, ent the new entity types, and here in the entity grid you see the objects which you can comment. Okay, then the next point, um, we come to our next point, the data archiving processes. Um, the new version makes it's possible to display um, the APIs of DSOs, RDSOs, and info cubes. You can, they can be called from the context menu of the um, respective info provider, and they can also be commented and included into documentation. So as you can see here, I opened the context menu of an, um, um, of an DSO, and then um, I can go to others and then to show data archiving processes. And then this list will be um, generated in which you can um, comment um, if you right click on the DRP and click on show comment. We have a lot of other improvements. Um, for example, it's now possible um, to display the info areas in the entity grid for info sources. Hungarian and Croatian was added to translations. Um, it's possible to show the general Doku Performer settings only once in the documentation. And another point is um, that now you can show the entire coding of a customer exit variable. Um, some information um, about this topic. Um, in previous versions, it was only possible to display the code step by step and only the code which is done in these steps. And we didn't display, for example, the declaration of variables. And with the new version, it's possible to display the entire coding. So not only the coding between the steps. Um, and to be able to display the entire coding, you must first tick a checkbox in the settings. But for more information, you can um, check our user manual. We, we describe it there um, in detail. Um, in the new version, of course, not only the BW component was improved, but also the BO and HANA components. So, for example, we added a new analysis function in BO. So now it's possible to resolve one or more 
promotion jobs and um, it's possible to list all the entities of one or multiple promotion jobs and um, the contained objects will then be displayed in a list and um, as you can see here you can find this function um, in analysis reports and um, the list can also be exported to Excel and you can execute the naming convention check. We can see here this function. So as you can, as you can see here, first of all, you can select um, the folder. Then we display all the promotion jobs um, of the selected folder. You can select one or multiple promotion jobs, click on resolve promotion job, and then you see all the objects of the promotion job. And as I said before, you can click here to export the list as an Excel document, or you can click on this button to execute a naming convention check. But before you do this, you have to define naming conventions for each BO entity type in the function um, naming conventions of BO entities that you can also find here in analysis reports. Okay, let's turn now to HANA. With the new version 19.2, it's now possible to synchronize, to comment and to document HANA catalog entities. So Docker Performer supports um, the following objects, HANA indexes, sequences, tables, table types, views and virtual tables. And they can also, of course, be added to scenarios. And um, the synchronization is slightly different compared to other HANA objects. We can see this here. So as you can see here, we added some filters. And you can um, use spe these special filters to specify which entities should be synchronized. So initially, namespaces are inserted that are not to be considered for the synchronization. And the reason is, if the filters are not set, there are many objects from certain namespaces um, that are not relevant. And this leads to the fact that unnecessary data um, is stored in your Docker Performer database. And this is also not good for your performance. So this is the reason why we inserted these values initially into the filters. You can, of course, if you need um, some entities um, of this namespace, then you can delete the um, the excluded values and save the selection. So let's look to the future. I'd like to give you some few details about the features of 19.3. So first of all, we plan to improve um, the scenarios. We want to improve the UI and the logic, the entire behavior um, of the scenarios. So this is so this is one point. We also want to um, make it possible to analyze and compare multiple entities in one workspace. Um, we also want to add new Lumira functions. For example, like add the Lumira um, into other BW functions like um, the way used analysis. So if you analyze the query, then you, it should also be possible to check if a query is used in a Lumira report. Um, we also currently running a proof of concept for the Confluence support and for SAP Analytics Cloud. Yes, so if you want to try all the functions, um, if you want to try it um, yourself, or if functions of certain modules have been shown that you find exciting, and um, if you haven't licensed yet the modules or components, you are welcome to contact us. So we can do an individual webinar in which um, we can show you the functions um, live in a web session, and then we can also answer all of your questions. Um, you can also test all functionalities of the Docker Performer for 60 days in a trial phase. And of course, we are um, also always very pleased when we have the opportunity to, um, to present functions on site at your system so that you can see the advantages of Docker Performer directly. And this brings us to the end. So I hope I was able to show you the exciting new features of the 19. Um, two version today. Um, this was only uh, uh, an overview, so check out our user menu to get more information. Um, we created a what's new page in our user menu, so on this page you can um, check all the new functions and also all the technical information. 
Um, thanks for your attention. I hope to see you again at a future webinar. Um, yes, I wish you a nice day. Goodbye. Thanks.